All right, so I'm going to be talking about how to submit an order through IB in Sync for interactive brokers. So IB in Sync is a wrapper for their API, uh, really a bunch of fancy jargon, which means that we're able to uh, computer code to place orders on interactive brokers. A couple of things you're going to need. First, you're going to need to download Python. You're going to also need to download IB in Sync, and you can find it by Googling IB in Sync like, like that. And then we got GitHub over here. This is the project. <clears throat> Come down and, and install it on your computer through that right there. Second thing we're going to need is an interactive broker's account, and then we're also going to have to subscribe to data subscriptions. And so uh, my ones I'm subscribed to and recommend are these right here. In order to do this, you have to fund the account, and it, I believe it has to be at least $2,000. So um, that's something that has to be done. And then you'll subscribe to these. Uh, I've got U.S. Security Snapshot and Future Values Bundle. Then I've got the U.S. Equity and Options Add-on Streaming Bundle. And a CBOE1 Add-on Bundle. These are the ones I have. I recommend uh, you may be able to do it with something different, but these are the ones I have and recommend. All right, so I'm over here in Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to imp import IB in Sync. I'm going to say from IB in Sync import star. I'm also going to import random. We'll see what we're going to do with that in a minute. That comes with Python. And so the first thing we have to do is connect to interactive brokers. So I'm going to copy over some code here. And you can see here I've got this random right down here. You could put one right here. It'll be fine. Um, I've been experimenting with this to see if it speeds up uh, any, any speed performance. Uh, it doesn't look like it does, but I keep it there anyway. <clears throat> So the first thing we're going to do, IB equals IB, and then IB.connect. The important thing on this line is this second number right here, this 7496, because sometimes this will be 7497, um, and it won't work. And so this number right here has to match our socket port in the Trader Workstation. So if we come over here to the Trader Workstation, and I may not have mentioned another requirement is that we also have Trader Workstation up and running when we're running this code. It has to be running in the background. And so I've got that up here. And you can see here under, what did we do? File, Global Configurations, API Settings. The socket port right here is set to 7496. And so those match. If those don't match, though, the code won't work. So you got to make sure that those match. Apply, OK. Then we can minimize it to the background again. So once those match, we can begin by coding it up. What I'm going to show first is just a real basic way that you could do it if you were during the regular trading hours. Now this won't work in the pre-market or the after hours, but this will work during the regular trading hours. So the first thing we would say is stock. And now we can't in this, we can't just say the ticker name. We can't say, hey, this is Tesla. It's not going to understand what you're saying. We have to format it in a certain way. And so this is how you format it. We're going to do stock. First parameter is symbol. We're going to say Tesla. Our exchange is going to be smart slash Amex. Now, you'll see online some people will do sm just smart, and even IB says to use just smart. Uh, I've tested this for a while, and when you use just smart, sometimes the tickers won't work. So the one that I've found works for the most amount of tickers is smart slash Amex. And so after that, we're going to do currency equals US dollars. Okay, so now that's formatted correctly. Second part is we have to tell it what we want it to do. So we want it to action is going to be uh, to submit a market order. 
our action is going to be to buy. The quantity is going to be one share. And then TIF stands for time and force. What this will do is it defaults to where it will cancel the order at the end of the day if it hasn't filled. Um, so I'm specifying GTC, which stands for good to close, which means that it'll stay open perpetually until it gets filled. And then to place the order, we'll come down here and say order equals IV.place order. Tell it the stock, tell it the action, and then we should be good to go. So uh, when you run this during the regular trading hours, um, this uh, should place the order. We can go ahead and run it now. It'll, it'll send the order to uh, Trader Workstation, but let's see. All right, case sensitive here. Got to make sure that it's a lowercase p. Uh, so it's going to be a lowercase place and then a capital O on the order. Go ahead and run this. So if I come here, I should see that it submitted that Tesla, but it's currently being held and monitored. That means it's not active. And so if you come over here, what you'll find is uh, currently it's 5 a.m. right now, so we're in the pre-market. If you come here and try to submit a market order, and you come here to where it says day, it'll probably say day on yours, you'll see this fill outside RTH, and it will be grayed out. You won't be able to click it. Okay, so this is the reason why this doesn't work during the pre-market or the after hours, because it does not allow you to submit market orders during those times. If I had to guess why, I would say that because the spread gets very wide during the pre-market and the after hours, there's not a, as much liquidity as there is in the regular hours, and so they don't want people to uh, submit market orders and end up losing money. Uh, they want you to make sure that you know exactly what you want to buy it or sell it for, uh, if I had to guess, but uh, they don't allow you to do that. So we can only use a limit order you can come here and then you'll choose you can check that box down there so I would check GTC and fill outside RTH so to do this in IB and sync we're gonna have to change around this action here and so we're gonna erase the market order and we're gonna call just order now first parameter is gonna be action equals we're gonna buy the stock Total quantity is going to equal 1. Our order type, this is where we specify that we want a limit order, LMT. So now that we've specified a limit order, it wants us to tell it what price do we want it to fill at. So I'm going to put a placeholder here for the time being. TIF, time and force equals good to close. And then lastly, we're going to say outside RTH stands for regular trading hours. We're going to say true. So now I have to update that limit order. And if I want it to fill right away, I'm going to have to do something uh, below the bid. So the bid right here, 209.85. So let's come back in here and we'll change this 209.85. And we'll run this. Okay, I put, it should be LMT price right there. Run that one more time. All right, so this has to be lowercase th. So you can see how sensitive the case is here. I have to be careful, make sure that uh, we're following the documentation. And so you can find the documentation by Googling uh, IBM Sync. I'm trying to do this quick, and so I'm making syntax errors, but um, this is where you go to find the documentation, and you can figure out exactly what syntax they want. All right, so now that we've got that, we can go ahead and submit it. All right, so we, I don't know if you just heard that, but I just went ahead and filled it for, come over here. There we go. So we just got a fill there. 
Uh, and so we now have one position of Tesla. So now what we want to do is we want to sell that share. And so we can do that by changing this to sell and then updating this price. And I'm going to put a price that's just above the ask. And if we run this, it should sell it. Come back over here. And again, it's not always immediate. Sometimes it is immediate. Other times it takes it a while. We can see it submitted it and it's currently active and waiting to be filled. So that'll fill sometime soon. Let me see what the 209.90. Okay, it's not filling because I put a price that's higher, so let's do the bid there. I'll update that. That should fill. All right. And so that sort of highlights the big issue here is that we don't want to keep having to enter in our limit prices every single time. And so what we can do is we can edit this round to where it'll automatically submit an order uh, that is equal to the bid price and then sell it that's equal to the ask. And so this is the same thing as a market order where we're losing the amount of the spread, uh, but it's going to make it to where we don't have to enter a number. Another thing we want to do is we're going to put this uh, into a variable and we want two variables here, buy stock and sell stock. Uh, so that we can call these, um, I don't know what you call them, like functions uh, to, to get them to buy the stock and then sell the stock when we want. And so to do that, we're going to come here, up here to the top, right below Connecting Interactive Brokers. And we're going to say define, we're going to call this buy stock. And we're going to place this action inside of it. So what this does is this is like um, you can think of this as like storage. So we're saying whenever we type in buy stock with those two parentheses we want it to run this code that's indentured uh, to the right underneath this buy stock. And so we're going to say the action is going to be order here and then we're going to want it to place that order as well. And then on the reverse, we're going to copy this, control C to copy, come down here, paste this in. We want it to sell stock. And then all we have to do is just change this little action right here. So up here, I got to change this to buy. And so now when we go down here and type in buy stock, or sell stock, it'll run this code without us having to retype all of this. All right, so now that we've gotten that in there, I'm going to erase the action. I'll also erase place order. We'll leave the stock outside of it. And what we'll do to access the bid and the ask, we'll come down here and go data equals IV.REQ capital M K D capital D A T A quest market data. This is going to have four parameters. Our contract is going to equal our stock. Generic tick list. We're going to leave this blank. We're going to put two apostrophes there, comma. This next one right here is called snapshot. And what this does is, um, my understanding of what this is, is it just returns the data once. And if this were true, then you're only going to be able to return it once. Um, if you want to have a perpetual flow of market data, you would want this to be false. And then we would set up the code a little differently. What we're doing is we're only going to request it once. So we could have this true. Uh, but just for ease, I'm going to say snapshot equals false. It'll still, it will still run the code and have the same effect as if it were true, um, but this is uh, avoiding issues when you do want a perpetual flow of data. And then regulatory snapshot down here, we want this to be false because 
uh, if you do this snapshot, they will charge you uh, money. And so we want that to be false. After that, we want it to, it has to, we have to wait a second. If you come in here to the documentation to request market data, you'll read wherever it's at. Let's see if I can find it here. There we go. Get ticker of the given contract. It must have been requested. Okay. The ticker may not be ready yet if called directly after. Okay, so we have to wait a amount of time in order for this to work. So we're going to say ib.sleep. We're going to give it one second. And then what we'll want it to do after we've gotten that data is we want it to buy the stock. So yeah, so let's wait on that. So let's go ahead and run this and what we'll see if we run this, we can look down below here in the terminal. What we should see is, oh, sorry, the print. Then we have to print the data. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, so right down here is the information that is returned. And we can see in this thing that we have the bid right here of 210 and the ask of 210.08. So what we want to do is when we run this, we want it to take this bid, take this ask, and put that number into our action up here at the top. And so to do that, we'll say on these numbers for the buy, we want it to we want it to buy it at the cheapest uh, or the most expensive one possible. So that's going to be data to ask. And then we're going to sell it at the cheapest one possible. And this is the same thing as a market order where we just want it to get filled immediately. We don't care about uh, the best price. That's going to be data.bid. I'll get rid of this print. And what we'll do now is we'll buy stock. Requesting that buy the stock. We'll have it wait. 15 seconds, and then we'll have it sell the stock. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a run. All right, so if we come over here, you can see that it submitted it, and it just filled right there. And so it bought it, and now we're waiting on it to sell it. And there we go, it just sold it at 209.99. We can come in here to, and see these things right here. So we had our, it bought it 210.09 and sold it 209.99. So we lost that spread, but again, you can see we got it filled, and we sold it in a relatively short order. And so from here, this gives you a good base to where you can start trying to program it to do strategies. So we can we have it right here where we're waiting 15 seconds, but uh, really the sky's the limit as far as what strategies you want to program to when this thing buys the stock and when it sells the stock.